Well, thank you and good afternoon. It is such a pleasure to be here in, uh, in Utah at the League of Cities and Towns. You know, I often find myself in, uh, for business reasons or for leadership reasons, staying here in your fair city. And I always frankly look forward to that. Uh, in my job as NLC president, I've been traveling all over the country and I have to say this is one of my favored destinations. So it's a real pleasure to be here today. So um, it's my official role to bring you greetings from the National League of City, Cities. And, uh, you know, we presidents, we go around, we talk to different groups, um, and we always try to talk a little bit about what's going on at the national level and try to, to marry it in with what's happening here at the state level. And one thing I want to remind you guys of this year is that because we're celebrating our 100th year at NLC, we're a century old this year, we, we need to remember that our parent organizations are actually the state leagues. So you guys started the National League of Cities. So don't necessarily look up to us. We're more like a child than a parent. I just want you to keep that in mind. So if we need correcting, you know, please let me know. That's part of my job. So first of all, I want to thank Mayor uh, Aaron Mendehall here. Thank you so much for hosting this meeting. You have a beautiful city of Salt Lake City. And it's an honor to be here. We are so fortunate at NLC to have a great partnership with the Utah League of Cities and Towns. Over the years, we've had a lot of collaboration between the two organizations. Um, and hundreds of thousands of Utahns have benefited from those collaborations. Now, I know the leadership of President Michelle Kafui, Kafusi sorry, has been excellent. Here this past year, she's assisted by Troy Walker and Kate Bradshaw, who I haven't met yet, but I'm sure they are around here somewhere. And Executive Director Cameron Deal, who has been a regular fixture at NLC, thank you for loaning us your leadership uh, for important activities at the national level. And of course, I want to thank the entire board of your fine organization for putting on this meeting and for hosting me here today. Um, Utah representation at NLC is present in our committees, in our constituency groups, in our member councils, you have a wealth of uh, representation. And I just want to call out a few, uh, not the least of which is Clearfield Mayor Mark Shepard. Mark, are you in here somewhere? Where's Mark? I know he's in here. He's on our board of directors. He is a great representative for Utah, and we're just really pleased to have him. Now, you've already heard NLC is celebrating our 100th birthday. Um, it was in 1924 that a guy named John Stutz, who was active in the Kansas Municipal League, decided that we needed a national organization to represent all of these state-level leagues. This is where your parentage comes into this. And he convened nine other city uh, state leaders, and they met at the University of Kansas. And this past February, I had the honor of going to that place at that time in that room and seeing the documents they had in front of them for what they wanted to do by establishing the National League of Cities. And ironically, everything they wanted to do is the exact same things that we all want to do. We all want to be excellent at our job of being municipal leaders and providing for our residents. We all want to know what we need to know. We want to have access to the research, the papers, the ideas that are going to inform us in how we do our work. That was one of their priorities. And they wanted a voice in front of the national government. And ironically, these are the same things that NLC still does. And in addition, they thought we needed a place where city leaders can get together and talk outside of an agenda to learn from each other. And frankly, I think that is the most valuable thing about having meetings like this and about having meetings like the National League of Cities because you get to get together with your peers from all over the country, and frankly, all of us have the exact same issues, different details, different sizes, different magnitudes, but they're all the same problems. So there's enormous power in an organization. I do like that they called out excellence in public service as a goal of the organization. I'm not sure we do our jobs often enough thinking about excellence. There's a, uh, a statement I've used in my city, and I encourage you to copy it if you so wish, that good enough isn't. Sometimes we shorten it to good enough ain't. Um, just the idea that 
stumbling along and getting stuff done and doing everything we're supposed to do is not enough. Greatness is enough. Excellence is enough. I like that word. So a lot has changed since 1924, including the name of our organization, because back then it was the American Municipal Association. At some point it got changed to the National League of Cities. But, um, you know, you guys uh, actually were about this business long before the NLC was. Who knows when this organization was founded? Anybody? My notes say 1907. 1907, so you're 17 years ahead of the National League of Cities. And as we look around the room, I think we still feel some 1907 in here, right? We probably still have the same problems they had in 1907 in some way. I don't know if we have anybody here from 1907. That would be remarkable. But, you know, you've also had this great tradition of leadership within the NLC. How many presidents do you think you've had from Utah at the NLC? You probably, many of you know one, Ralph Becker. Ralph Becker was president of the NLC in 2015. The other one I can give away with a big clue of he is... He's an NLC past president. He's also the only NLC president ever to be an astronaut. Jake Arn, right. I was, uh, when I learned that he was on the list of past presidents, I didn't know that until a short time ago. It sort of made me jealous because when I was a kid, guess what I wanted to be? An astronaut. Instead, I ended up a president of the NLC. He, he was able to do both. Okay, so this year... Um, you know, NLC is working on all the things we are normally working on. We're also celebrating this 100-year anniversary. And I'm spending some of my time going around the country talking about cities as laboratories of democracy. Now, that might sound a little odd to some people. And indeed, the original use of that phrase, laboratory of democracy, was referring to the states. It was a Supreme Court decision that referred to the states as laboratories of democracy. And I guess that's true. But do any of us honestly ever look up to the state? That is an applause line if you want one. <laughs> it's okay to say it. We're cities. In a way, we do far more experimentation than any state can do. We're the actual laboratory of democracy. And I've also got to say my situation as a leader is a little unusual. I'm in my 22nd year um, of representing the city of Rancho Cordova, California. We're about 85,000 people. We're very near Sacramento. We incorporated in 2002, so I'm a founding city council member of that city, but the community was an unincorporated part of a county. And we know that counties don't necessarily do a great job of municipal services, but our county, Sacramento County, decided, oh no, we can do this. And so my job as an elected official has been fixing everything that went wrong under that scenario and trying to grow my community. And I'm doing that, unusually, as a scientist. I'm a virologist by training, a PhD in molecular biology. And so I have a scientist's eyes looking at a startup city that's already kind of 45 years old and has you know, middle-aged problems, but in terms of a city organization is starting from scratch. And where do you think I looked for help in how to do that? My state league and the national league is where I found guidance, where I found the best ideas about how to start literally every function in my city from scratch, because that was our challenge. And so my city experimented with solutions. We had hypotheses about the best way to do something. We tested those hypotheses. We basically did experiments. We figured out what worked best. And we adjusted when things did not go well, and they will not. And if you're working hard, things in your city will not go well either, or you're not trying hard enough. We have to have some things not work in order to learn from them and make things better. So in that context, I'm certainly acting like a scientist and running my city, but I suspect all of you are too. You're all operating a laboratory, whether you realize it or not, whether you've used those terms or not, where you are working to find the best answers the, and get the best data and find the best solutions for all of your residents because we're all aiming for that level of excellence. So our cities are laboratories. It's where we can launch new initiatives, new programs, new partnerships, and where we can innovate to better uh, our constituents. So there are three major pillars of what we do. If you think about it, it's, it's kind of obvious. The first thing we have to do as city leaders, and this is as a laboratory, you have to have partnerships. 
So our residents should always be top of mind as partners. How is it going to benefit them? How are they going to react? What do they know that I don't? What do they understand that I perhaps can't? How do we tap into what they do and what they know for the betterment of this entire community? So for the first time in NLC's 11-year history of doing a state of the city's report, which was a big vacuum cleaner going all over the country figuring out what are the issues in cities, the number one issue was, any guesses? Housing. I saw it on your table here too, right? You've got housing issues. Everybody has housing issues. We're all focused on housing issues. But for the first time in NLC's work of doing these annual reports on what are the big issues in cities, housing is the number one issue. And so NLC is going to take action on that, and we're going to look out and see what sort of experiments have been done and what are the results and report them to you. So NLC partnered with a bunch of key stakeholders worried about housing supply. So the American Planning Association was at the table. A lot of home builders were at the table. That became a controversial decision. Mortgage bankers were at the table. Realtors, community members, everyone who was seeking some, to make housing more attainable for residents. They were at the table. NLC convened this group. The result was a product we're calling the Housing Supply Accelerator. So this outlines strategies that cities can follow um, to reach the right housing goals for their community. I really encourage you to take a look at it. It's on NLC's website. Just do a little Google search, NLC Housing Supply Accelerator, and you will find, a, you will find that. So partnerships, that's an example of a partnership that NLC is working on, on your behalf and on, for the benefit of all of our residents. Second pillar we operate under as elected officials is service. I suspect everyone in this room is here because you want to give something back to your community. You're doing this out of service. Is anyone doing it for the money? Anybody? One. I don't know what city that is, but I'd like to find out. Like my salary, I don't even know if you could call the salary. It's like $500 a month. This is not for the money. It's a full-time job, essentially, if you let it be. And it, it has to be sometimes. We're here for service. Like it's like a fundamental tenet that holds us together. So this year we're working on some reports that will hopefully help talk about the sort of service we're in and the service we can do to benefit our residents. We produce a lot of research. I don't know if people realize that in general, but just about half of the NLC budget is spent on research projects. Some of them are funded by private foundations. Some of them are funded by government. Some of them are funded by NLC ourselves. And those products all end up either in your email box, your inbox, they might end up in a text message to you, they might end up in the mail to you. I really encourage you to take a look at those because they go into a lot of detail and they involve a lot of effort and there's enormous value in those products. So um, one thing we came across this year that uh, it was a particular interest and a particular opportunity and something that our research uncovered was the difficulty of smaller jurisdictions in getting federal transportation grants, infrastructure grants. Now, this is not really a surprise, I think. I think for at least the two last two presidential administrations, people at the Department of Transportation have talked about this, how if you're a city below, say, 60,000, certainly if you're below 20,000, you probably aren't applying for what you should, and maybe you're not applying often enough. But the cost and the difficulty was just too much of a barrier. You know, we've heard stories about cities spending $100,000 on an application for a transportation grant. And the most recent transportation legislation that passed took the number of programs from 40 to something like 400. It's gotten much more complex, much more difficult. So the problem ha was potentially going to grow bigger than ever. Our response at NLC was to find sponsors like the Bloomberg Foundation to fund an initiative which we call the Local Infrastructure Hub. Has anyone in here worked with the Local Infrastructure Hub? I see a couple of hands. Local infrastructure hub can be of enormous value to your jurisdiction. I really encourage you to check this out. Uh, to date, $300 million has been allocated to cities who participated in the local infrastructure hub. $300 million has gone to cities that probably otherwise would not have received grants. Um, and that's just in our first year of operation. The local infrastructure hub gives your staff training, gives you access to consultants, gives you access to resources, makes an application possible, and makes sure you're applying on the right line of those 400 options that are out there. So check it out, NLC's local infrastructure hub. 
Finally, the third tier of our work, and particularly as our work operating these laboratories, is innovation. There is not much we can do uh, that is new or different or better without innovation. And it is really important as local leaders that we're sort of laser focused on uh, things that will give us innovation. Doing the same thing the same way because it's always been done that way is not innovation. Even if you put a new color on the brochure, not innovation. There is no better example of this, I think, than probably the emergence of artificial intelligence and what that innovation could mean for our cities. So in March, NLC is working on uh, artificial intelligence and its application for um, our cities. We partnered with Google and launched an artificial intelligence task force. The group has met at Google headquarters in July. They're talking about the opportunities, the advantages, the challenges, the intrigues around bringing AI technologies to cities to help us do our job. It is a really interesting debate. It brings up questions like, what data actually is the AI using in order to render a conclusion or opinion about something? Because if it doesn't have the right input, the output is questionable. It brings into question what happens to AI in a couple of generations. This is now a little bit of science coming from me, unfortunately. Um, what happens to AI in a couple of generations when it's vacuuming the web for information and a lot of what it's vacuuming in that first sweep is probably original work, but in the second sweep around the web when it's vacuuming the second time, a bunch of what it's reading is gonna be the product of AI. What happens if there's an error introduced into the AI when it publishes stuff online that it then goes around and vacuums up the second time? And the third time, and the fourth time, and the fifth time, and the sixth time, AI could be gibberish. If it keeps getting junk in, it'll put more and more junk out. There's a lot of sort of high level, even theoretical issues about this problem, but NLC is working on it. If you're interested, I encourage you to, uh, to check out um, our AI program. Finally, I'm gonna switch back to the centennial a little bit. We have been celebrating our 100th anniversary in a number of ways. At the start of this year, we came up with uh, what in retrospect is somewhat of a crazy idea. The crazy idea was, let's get in an RV Let's get it in an RV, drive around the country, and visit 100 cities. Sounds like fun, right? 365 days, one RV, 100 cities. Guess how many applied to be in? Several hundred. Now we had to go to our members and say, sorry, you didn't make the cut of being one of the 100. Second problem was, that takes a lot of staff, right, to get around the country takes them out of other jobs. So it ended up being a costly but important thing that we did. If I had this to do over again, I'd probably alter it a little bit in the experiment, right? When you run it the second time, you have a little more information. You might clarify it. But we have been out, nonetheless, to every corner of this country. The Northeast, the Southwest, the Midwest, the South, the West, all over the place. Not necessarily with this RV, because it only had a range of a certain distance, but with other RVs that look similar to that. And not necessarily with me at every stop, but with a slew of different uh, NLC leaders at those stops. Now, I have done many of those stops myself, and we've had second vice president, Mayor Steve Patterson, has done a lot of those stops as well in the Midwest. And our CEO, Clarence uh, Anthony, has been on a lot of those trips. And I must tell you what a warm feeling it is to roll into town on this big kind of ugly blue bus thing uh, and have people greet you like you're a celebrity because they are so excited about their city and so wanting to share the greatness in their city. And that's what we saw on this tour was the greatness of our cities from the smallest to the largest, the things that are being accomplished out there by cities of all types and sizes and geographies is incredible. We are all running our laboratories very well to come up with the results that we see. And it's been really, really exciting. It's not just about the red carpets, it's about how much those of us who participated in these learned. Um, and I think it's really important that we also had NLC senior staff get out of Washington, get out of that Washington bubble, get out into the real country and see how do things work on the ground, like face to face for a day looking at a particular city. So I don't know if any of you here participated as one of those NLC 100 cities. Uh, if you did, I thank you. If you didn't, 
know that we learned a lot in the process, and I actually expect we will see this somehow going forward as an ongoing system of, uh, of outreach. Don't tell Clarence Anthony I said that. That would probably get me in trouble. So the Roadshow is certainly helping us gear up for the 100th year, but we also have a massive event coming up in Tampa in November. I really encourage you to attend. This is the City Summit event. It's in Tampa Bay in November. We are still putting the finishing touches on the speakers and the celebration, but I can reveal two that I've been authorized to talk about. Lindsey Vaughn will be there. You will know her as a gold medalist. Uh, and she's a downhill skier, is that correct? Is it slalom? I think it's slalom. Gold medalist, really happy to have her there. And then Soledad O'Brien, who you probably recognize from Sunday morning television, is also going to be there acting sort of as a moderator and an anchor for part of the conference. So that is just a few short months away. I urge you to register now. I can tell you because it's the 100th anniversary, we did a lot of extra fundraising this year. Their corporate sponsorships are off the chart. The event is gonna be one of a kind. It's actually a day longer than the normal event as a result. So I really encourage you, if, you've got, if you haven't been to an LLC meeting, this is the one to attend. So with that, I have just about reached the end of my printed remarks here. Um, don't miss our big celebration. Think about your city as a laboratory. Think about excellence as a goal, not just good enough. And always dream big for your city. And until I see you in November, my best wishes to the uh, municipalities, cities, towns, villages of Utah. Um, I thank you for your service and your participation in the NLC, and I look forward to many fruitful years together. Thank you very much.